morning, Bishop Timothy Byron McGee and Pastor Bernadine Bell McGee are honored to have you worship with them at 16012 Cottage Grove in South Holland, Illinois. We believe Jesus is Lord, building his kingdom is our purpose, and every guest or member is our priority. Wherever you are online, join, like, follow, and share. We can be found on Facebook and YouTube. Now, let's enter into our worship. Bless your name, Jesus. Listen, sometimes it's discouraged, but not defeated. Cast down, but not destroyed. There are times I, I don't understand, but I still believe that it's turning around. Disappointments. There are times I I felt so alone. Some of my friends they they let me down, but I still believe. Anybody believe that that is turning around for me? All right. I can see the breaking. I can see the breaking of day. God is. God is making the way. Thank you, Jesus. Changes coming for me. Anybody believe that this morning? Stand strong and believe. Thank you, Lord. There's no reason to doubt. No, He's working it out. It's turning. You know this part right here it just says it won't always be like this the Lord will perfect that concerning me and sooner or later it'll turn
Somebody just encourage yourself. It won't always be like this. I, I can't hear y'all. It's a, it won't always be like this. Thank you, Jesus. Say soon or It's turning around for me. Whatever that relationship is, whether it's the children, it's your spouse, it's turning around for me. Last time, just lift your hands right here and say, it's turning around for me. Now somebody just open your mouth and just bless God for that right there. Now I said, bless God for that right there. That's good news today. It's turning around for me. It's turning around in my favor. It's turning around for me. Hallelujah. It's turning around for me. Can you just close your eyes right there? A lot of times we can be so robotic in church. And we can be so into somebody else catching a message that we don't catch it for ourselves. And so concerned with other things of the world that we forget to, to do it ourselves. I need you to really get that impossible thing on your mind and say, it's turning around for me. It looks impossible right now, God, but here is what I know, Jesus. It's turning around for me. Yes, it is, Jesus. It's turning around for me. Now, somebody clap your hands off of that good news today. Come on, clap your hands off that good news this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Can you, can you drop it a whole step for me, please? Come on, just open your mouth and just continue. Bless your name, Jesus. It's turning. Look at your neighbor and say, it's turning for you. And you know who's going to do it? Jehovah Jireh, your provider. That's who's going to do it. That's who's turning it. Hallelujah. There's a song that's, that's out by Maverick City and just says, Jaira, you are enough. Yeah. Jaira, you are enough. And I In every circumstance, Chira, you are enough. Just lift your hands right here and just close your eyes while I sing that. Chira, you are enough. Yes, you are, Jesus. Chira, you are enough. Together, say, Chira, 
just lift your hands and tell the Lord, say, say, Chiro, you are enough. Last time we just tell him, and I will be content in every circumstance. Chiro, you are enough. Somebody open your mouth and say, thank you for being enough for me, God. Come on, somebody open your mouth and thank the Lord in this place today. We hope that you were blessed by today's worship. Now, let's prepare our hearts and our minds to receive a fresh word from the Lord from our very own phenomenal teacher and spiritual leader, Bishop Timothy Byron McGee. How many glad to be here at Epic Vision Center this morning? Amen. We're glad to have you. Thank God for you. Let's give God a hand and praise for our first lady, Dr. Bernadette. Come again. Amen. Glad that all of you came to the house of the Lord today for the last three weeks. For the last three weeks, we've been teaching on a series, This Season Will Change. This season will change. It will change. Did y'all hear what I say? It will change. It will. Look at me. It will. Sometimes you got to get out of your own mindset and let somebody speak into your life. I don't care what you're going through. And I'm not just saying it to you. I'm believing it for myself. I'm believing it for my family. I'm believing it for my own home. Somebody shout, it will change. And so we've been speaking this season will change them. Uh, 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 we were talking about what Daniel uh, uh, said in Daniel, the second chapter, how that Melchizedek had put out an order. And long story short, he was going to kill all of the astrologers, all the sorcerers, and all the magic magicians that could not interpret the dream. And so uh, it got word to Daniel and the Hebrew boys, and Daniel went and prayed, and he exalted the Lord. He exalted the Lord, and Daniel said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are yours. And he changes the times and the seasons. What does he change? And he changes the time and the season. And that part stuck out at me. Uh, and he removed kings and he set it up kings and he giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. Uh, and so in Ecclesiastes, uh, it says this, uh, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. What am I trying to get us to realize? People, it's only common for us to go through different seasons and different changes in our lives. But I wanted to let you know I don't care what you've been going through and how long you've been going through. Look at me. I want to encourage your heart today. I want to encourage your spirit today. I don't care what goes on when you look in the mirror. The people of God, you've got to look in the mirror and say, my season is going to change. I don't care how long it is. Cry if you must. Have weeping eyes if you must. But I'm not going to cry forever about this thing. I'm not going to cry too much.
got you long. God, uh, ah, because God changes the time and the season. And so therefore, I went to Timothy. I went to Timothy. We're going to move on today. I'm not going to go back. But I went to Timothy. And uh, the first chapter, the 12th verse, and it says, For the which cause do I suffer these things? Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed. People, and I know sometimes when we go through different challenges, we're ashamed of them. But you don't have to be ashamed. You don't have to be discouraged. You don't have to be looked down upon. You know why? For I know in whom I believe. Yeah, 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 I didn't get that. Uh, see, it's not up to me. It's not just predicated on what I do. I'm not ashamed because I know in whom I believe. And I'm persuaded uh, he's going to keep everything uh, that I've committed unto him. Uh, I just want you to tell uh, you don't have to be ashamed. Uh, you don't have to be discouraged. Uh, if it didn't work out yet, uh, that don't mean it ain't going to work out. Because uh, I know uh, in whom I believe. Uh, I serve the almighty God. Uh, I believe in the everlasting Father. Uh, I believe in the great I am. Uh, I believe in the one uh, who can heal all manner uh, of sickness and diseases. Uh, I believe in the one uh, who can put the star in place, uh, who can put the sun in place. Uh, I believe the one uh, who can break the yoke uh, and destroy every chain. Uh, I believe in the one uh, that can undo heavy burdens, uh, that can let the oppressed go free, uh, that can deliver uh, from anything. Uh, I believe in the one uh, who can do anything uh, but fail. Uh, I know who I believe. Uh, I know who I trust. Uh, I know who I depend on. I just wish I had somebody that knew. I know. I know. I know. I ain't talking about what I heard. I'm talking about what I know. I'm talking about what I know. I know what he's done for me. I know how he bought me out. I know how he's made a way. That's why in my quiet time, I say, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Like the old folks, how do you know? Look, somebody say, I just know. I just know. He did it for my mama, so he gonna do it for me. He did it for my daddy, so he gonna do it for me. I know in whom I believe. And I'm persuaded. I'm persuaded he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him. Let me ask y'all a question. Have you committed it to God? I know you carry it on your heart, but have you committed it to God? I know, and I like the way the NIV version said it. Uh, he says it this way. Um, that is why I am suffering as I am. Remember, you had to go through the good and the bad. He said, that's why I'm suffering. I am, and yet those things cause no shame. I came to tell you somebody, maybe you didn't get a deal or maybe you got bad news or maybe you on the somebody's bad list or they're thinking about evicting you or putting you out or they're thinking about repossessing your God. You ain't got to be ashamed. Did you hear? You ain't got to be ashamed. Maybe you didn't get everything that you trust in God for yet. Maybe, maybe it ain't all worked out. Look at me. You don't have to be ashamed. Because it didn't work out. Why? Because I am convinced. Oh, my God, my God. Woo! I 
just need anybody that know for sure to just jump up and say, I am convinced. I am convinced. Why am I convinced? Because he's never let me down. He's never brought, not brought me through. He's never not made a way. I am convinced according to his divine power that he will bring me out, uh, that he will deliver me, uh, that he will set me free. Somebody shout, I am convinced. Let me go. I'm convinced. He's able to guard that which I have entrusted in him. I'm convinced that he's the healer. I'm convinced that he's the way maker. Let me go. Let me go. See, people of God, you got to know, today I want to talk about Job. Oh, look at somebody say, it's time to walk into your new season. It's time to, time to walk into your new season. I know y'all tired, but see, faith without works is dead. Just get up one more time. Y'all gonna lose a few pounds today. Get up one more time and just start walking. See, it's time to walk into my new season. Come on, come on, just time, it's time to walk. It ain't time to sit there. It ain't time to be still. Tell him it's time to walk. You got to move. You can't stay in the same place. Then walk into your new season. Tell him it's time to walk. It's time to go. It's time to walk into your new season. Why? Because it's turning around for you. It's turning around for you. It's turning around for you. Keep walking. Keep walking. Walk into your season. Walk into your promise. Walk into your blessing. Walk into your healing. Walk into your new season. Walk on back to your feet. And, and, I, and I ain't gonna bother you no more this, this afternoon. Walk. 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 It's changing as you walk. It's turning as you walk. It's lifting as you walk. Walk! There you go, Felicia. Walk into your healing. Walk into your deliverance. Walk into the holy matter. Walk! Okay, okay, have a seat, have a seat, have a seat. Walk into your new season. Today, real briefly, I want to talk about Job, because I'm about to say the season is changing. I want to talk about Job. I don't have time to go through the whole story, but we know in uh, chapter one and in chapter two, there was a, um, for lack of a better word, there was a negotiation. I was going to say bargain, but there was a negotiation uh, about Job and the devil was walking around seeking those that he could deceive. And God said, have you considered my servant Job? And the devil said, I considered him, but you have a hedge around him. See, people, listen to me. The devil is knowledgeable of what God has done for you. Y'all yeah. miss what I just said. The devil is knowledgeable of what God has done for you. So, therefore, he had to go back to God to ask permission to do something to you. Long story short, the devil went back. Job didn't bow his said, You have a hedge around him. This is what the devil told God. If you remove the hedge, I will make him 
curse you to your face. And this is the part y'all don't like. When God put that child up, he said, okay. Come on. See, the reason y'all going through some stuff, the devil came to God about you, and, and God said, okay. Don't let this work out. He said, he, he, uh, uh, the devil said, if you don't let this work out for them, I make them denounce you. And God said, okay. Y'all wonder why y'all going through so much? God said, okay. But he didn't say okay for the devil to outdo you. He said okay because he knew he could trust you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He said, okay, do what you want to do. Just don't touch your soul. Because I don't care what you do to them. They're not going to bend. They're not going to bow. They're not going to give up. God said, they got too much word on the inside of them. They're not going to quit. They're not going to throw in the towel. They're going to keep coming. They're going to keep receiving. And they're not going to give up. Remember the last message Elder Tiff preached here? It was just one word. Who remembers the word? Who remembers the word? Y'all don't even like to say it. Who remembers the word? At that particular time, God said no to Job's health, no to Job's wealth, no to the life of Job's children. Y'all not listen to me. So sometimes God's, God's no is devastating. God said no. He said, do what you want to do to him, but don't touch your soul. Because God knew he had a plan for Job. So I was, I was studying this. Um, nobody really knows how long Job suffered. That's been a question uh, for the philosophers and for the theologians. Nobody really knows. But, but we sum it up at this. Everything he lost, his house, his children, his cattle, his asses, his horses, everything he lost, he lost in one day. Y'all not, not getting what I'm saying. He lost it. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Don't get scared, because if you lose it, God's got you. Amen. Amen. And if that's God's will for you, ain't nothing you can do to stop it. Look at me. That's why God don't tell you everything. Because, see, he knew what you was going to do for Job. See, in verse 2, there was a negotiation. But in verse 42, God turned the captivity. And so we don't know how long Job suffered. But we do know this. He lost it all in a day. And we do know this, that his friends sat with him in silence for seven days. So some theologians are calculating it to be a week. Can you, that's a rough week. Did y'all hear what I'm saying? Uh, you ain't had a rough week until you had a week like Job. And then not only did he lose everything, his wife backed out on him. You know, and it's not to, to go off on her or to diminish her. Anytime a mother, now fathers were weak too, but anytime a mother lose one of their children, they have a fit. My mother lost four before she passed away. Job and his wife lost all 12 of them. Somebody say one day. Could you imagine 
losing everything in one day. One day. And so, and so here, people of God, the season of struggling, the season of struggling is changing. So Job's wife said, Job, why don't you just curse God and die? We don't lost everything. See, sometimes it's more that it's, you can handle it. Well, not that you want to handle it at all, but you can handle it if it go a day or every couple of days or every three days, and you can say, if it ain't one thing, it's another, right? Y'all, y'all remember that? But when you lose everything in one day, she said, you know what? It's over. But I came to tell somebody that I believe it, it ain't over. Did you hear what I said? It ain't over. Because the season is getting ready to change. And this is what I love about Job in Job 2 and 10. In the B clause, he said, shall we accept only good from God and not bad? We like to say, accept the good from God, but we don't like to accept the bad things from God. Can I just tell you, Lord God, look at me. You're not going to get everything you want, but you are going to get everything you need. Can y'all hear what I'm saying? Because the season is changing. And when the season is changed, then you're going to get everything that you even want. And so, people of God, th- this is what I'm concerned about. Uh, 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 in Job 42, it said that you just have to learn how to endure your season. Did y'all hear what I say? You got to learn how to endure your season. Because Job went through. All we know is he went through 42 chapters. We know he lost it all in a day. And we know his friends sat with him for seven days. So we're just going to sum it up as this all happened in one week. And so you've got to endure until the end of your season. And this is what happened in Job 42 and 10. It said, you read the first line, read. And the Lord did what? He turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friend. Also what? Are y'all going to try it again without yarning? Let's go. Read on. See, I love that. Not only did he change his captivity, did he change the season. It says, also, I came to tell somebody, not only is God going to turn it around for you, not only is he going to change your season, uh, also, uh, he's going to give you twice uh, as much uh, than you had before. Uh, there's more on the way. Uh, somebody shout twice as much. Twice as much. So people, this is what I'm learning. We're going to come back to that. This is what I'm learning. Uh, we have to disconnect from the old reason of the old season and walk into the new season with the new reason. Did y'all get, get what I said? I'll say it again since you requested it. We have to disconnect from the old reason of the old season and walk into your new season with a new reason. There is a reason for every season. Look at somebody, let's go. I got a new reason in my new season. Come on somebody, tell them I got a new reason in my old season. 
people, this is why your path uh, is so important to let go. Uh, you can't go into your new season uh, still connected uh, to your old reason. Uh, you've got to have a new reason uh, for this new season. Uh, let go of the past. Uh, let go of what happened. Uh, let go of what happened. Uh, somebody say new reason uh, for new season. Uh, what is my new reason? Uh, I am the head uh, and not the tail. Uh, I'm above only uh, and not beneath. Uh, I'm blessed when I come. Uh, I'm blessed when I go. Uh, I'm healed uh, from the crown of my head uh, to the sole of my feet. Uh, my family is saved. Uh, my children are saved. Uh, my loved ones are saved. Uh, I got a new reason uh, to praise them because uh, he's never failed me. Uh, he's never left me. Uh, I got a new reason uh, to give him glory because uh, the season has changed uh, and I don't have to be uh, connected to my old reason. Uh, somebody shout new reason, new season. I said new reason, new season. I said new reason, new season. Give him a praise for it right now. Come here, Brandon. Brandon is the reason I got in my trouble as I did. He's the reason why things are going wrong in my life. He's the reason why everything is not working out. But if I go into my new season, I can't take my old reason with me. Y'all missing what I'm saying. If he is the reason, you can't go into your new season still attached to your old reason. Because it's going to make your new season just like your old season. But if you want a new season, you got to leave your old reason behind. You got to let it go. You got to give it up. I don't have that reason anymore. I don't have that reason anymore. Forgetting those things with my behind. But I press. I press toward the mark up the high calling somebody shout new reason new season give him a hand praise now get away from me you old season I rebuke you tell your old reason to get out of your life Huh. I need y'all to get that. Get rid of your old reason and walk into your new season. Come on, somebody. Sometimes, this is the thing. Come here, old reason. Just don't, don't come too close. Just stand right there. Because I'm not trying to reconnect with you no more. Y'all remember Sodom and Gomorrah? When Lot and his wife were supposed to get out of Sodom, right? And God said, if I find 50, I'll spare the city. God said, if I find 10, I'll spare the city. He said, if I find five, I'll spare the city. He said, get up, get out, and don't look back. Did y'all hear what I'm saying? Get up, get out. One more. And what else? He said, get up, get out, and what? He said, one more time. Get up, get out, and don't look back. See, y'all think I'm going someplace, the same place with this story. That's not where I'm going. So they got up. They got out. But some of us, are emotionally attached to our own reason. And Lot's wife, 
She got up. She got up. But she looked back because she had some emotion. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. She had some love. She had some like for the old reason. And when she looked back, she turned into a pillar of salt. What is my message to you today? Remember Lot's wife. When God brings you into a new season, don't even look at your old reason. If you got to walk by your old reason with your back face, don't even look back. Because sometimes if you look back, you'll go back. I ain't saying nothing. Come on, somebody. Reason, get out of here. I ain't got time to fool with you. Look at you. I'm walking into my new season. Look at me. I'm walking into my new season. I'm almost done. And so therefore, God allowed Job to go through. Let's just sum it up. I'm not a theologian. This is just my own summation for those that you are looking and those that you just listen. He endured a whole week of devastation. But when he got to verse 42, did y'all hear what I'm saying? Do y'all know what captivity is? God, I got to deal with this old reason again. Come here. Come here. To be, get behind me. To hold my arm. My arm. My arm. My arm. <laughs> reason don't even know what to do. Your old reason, come on, hold them, will keep you captive. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Your old reason will take you places and areas you don't want to go. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Your old reason. And so therefore, when Job endured his season, he had to first, God had to first break the captivity off of the old reason. So in verse 42, the reason had me going back and forth. But in verse 42, God turned. The captivity of Job, and he set me free from my old. Y'all ain't hearing it. He set me free from my old. Listen to this. I'm, I'm almost done. He set me free from my old reason. Listen. Therefore, I don't have a reason to go back to my old reason. He turned the captivity of Job. Reason. Go on the second row and hide behind the chair. Go on the second row. Get on the floor and hide behind the chair. He turned. Reason. Get on the floor and hide behind the chair. When he set me free. Listen. When he set me free, I looked for my reason. And I couldn't find him no more. They was gone. I, I don't see him no more. I don't have that temptation no more. I don't have that bondage no more. This is what I'm trying to tell you. God's going to turn it around. Well, you're not going to even see it no more. It will be nowhere in sight. Your own reason will be hiding from you in your new season. Somebody shout and give him glory. Keep hiding. I see your head. I want to see your head. Go down, reason. Go down. I don't want to see you no more. I have the old you ever made you so sick you didn't want to be bothered. I don't want to see it no more. He turned the captivity of Job. And the old reason, the reason for me to go back I didn't even see it no more. Y'all don't like to be honest with me. Sometimes you okay until you see your ex. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Sometimes you okay until you see who owes you money. Y'all 
Ah, la escena. Sometimes you okay until you see them with your outfit on. Come on, somebody. Some, some, reason you work out, stay down there. You're doing, you're doing your morning stretch. Sometimes you okay until you see your old reason. But I came to tell you all, God is going to obliterate. Annihilate, what else? Destroy. He's going to destroy your old reason. Like he did with the Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace. They was in the fiery furnace. The Bible said that the fourth one was in there like the Son of God. And when they came out, Elder, they didn't even smell like smoke. They didn't even smell like they had. I came to tell somebody that believe it in your new season. God is going to dismiss all the evidence of your own reason. I guess he's had stand up old reason and then by the time stand still I bet you stay woke now by the time I see my old reason again it ain't even faith me no more cause the truth of the matter you're going to see what you came out of before you're going to see him again did y'all hear what I'm saying? But this time when you see him, God's gonna just, he's gonna just let you walk past him, you know, say, hey, walk past him, just walk and move. Don't have no conversation. Don't shake their hands. Don't look in their eyes. Just say, hey, just say, hey, and keep moving. It ain't gonna, he's saying stuff to me, but I ain't even paying no attention to him. Cause God has broke me free from my old reason. What am I trying to tell you all? And I'm done. Thank you, Brandon. Give Brandon a hand. What is my new season? I got a new reason. In my new season. Why do I have a new reason? Colin, I ain't heard this scripture in a long time. But it came, this is why. The Lord has done great things for me. Whereof I am glad. That's why I have a new season. The Lord has done great things. Somebody say great things. Somebody say great Thing. Well, I am glad. I am glad. So people, walk into your new season with a brand new reason. Walk into it with a brand new meaning. Walk into your season with a brand new purpose, with a brand new perspective, with brand new insight, with new vitality, with new energy, with new hope with new victory, with a new shout, with a new praise and a new worship. Cause I came to tell you, the stormy season is over. Did y'all hear what I say? Somebody read it. Shout it. Scream it. Now put the praise on what you just said. Put the praise on what you just said. Last week, last Monday, last Tuesday, what was the storm? Monday or Tuesday? We started Monday night. 17 tornadoes came through the uh, Illinois State and Chicagoland area. Somebody say the stormy season is over. This is why you got to get rid of your old reason. 
people of God, 17 tornadoes came through Chicago season. Y'all wouldn't believe how it looked around this church. You think you just see those few bunches by the curb? They were everywhere. The trees were hanging. I came down here the other day to cut, and, and we didn't have no power. Power was out everywhere. Uh, 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 the Browns, they went, I think, about two days without power, a day and a half without power, no power, no air conditioning, no nothing, no nothing. The trees were hanging so low. My, my wife had already told me to tell them the leaves are hanging on the side when y'all go out. When you go out now, I made the tree into a canopy. You can drive under it, and it won't even touch your car. The stormy season is over. People, why? Why is it so important for you to let go of the past? See, Tuesday, it was, it, it was still residue from the storm, but, but by Wednesday, the lights were back on, the air was back on, the internet was back up, you could charge your phones. So the reason for the season didn't even matter anymore because you had entered back into a new season of everything working in your house. What am I trying to tell you all? Y'all better stop reminiscing. Why did this? this uh, why they did they that? Uh, why this happened? Uh, why it happened? Uh, it don't matter no more because I'm in a new season. Look at somebody say the power's on now. Trees all around our house. We lost a couple of, I can't think of what you call them, panels off of our roof. We lost a few of those, and it's like 25 feet high, so it's gonna stay like that for a season. <laughs> it's gonna stay like that for a season until I can get somebody to climb the ladder with a good reason. And so my thing is, people have got, but we're thankful. Somebody say thankful. Tree came trashing down in people's houses. I don't know if y'all saw the news. There was these big old gasoline trucks, you know, these round trucks that carry fuel and stuff on top of each other. It's a wonder the whole thing didn't blow up. Cars were overturned. Trapped on my 18 wheelers people on, I think it was I-55. The power lines were down across the expressway. You couldn't go or else you would have gotten electrocuted. But I came to tell somebody, no matter how bad the storm was, the storm is over. Your storm is over. Why? Because I got a new reason. I say I got a new reason for a new season. I want to encourage your heart. We started out with this storm will pass. But now we're decreeing that the storm is over. I don't know, look at me and I'm done. I don't know what chapter you are in your life right now. In Job, there was only 42 chapters. But in my life, I'm in 442. That's how far gone some things have happened. But I don't care what chapter you are in your life. Look at me, if you could just Get to chapter 42. If you could just endure to chapter 42, this is what you're going to have. Twice as more than before. Somebody say twice. Twice as much than before. Because that's what happened to Job. Look at somebody say, if you could just get to chapter 42. Stay in a race, everybody's standing on your feet. Stay in a race, if you could just get to chapter 42, twice as more than before. People, I have one last quote, and then we're done here for today. The last thing, you gotta know that you read. You gotta hold that in your heart. Seasons are not always easy. This is why 
I wanted to tell you. Look at me, because I'm speaking to you. It won't always be like this. Now, Father, lift your hands. Father, I thank you for your word that you sent on today. God, you are divine. And you know where each one of us stand in situations in our life. But God, we thank you right now that like Job in chapter 42, you're going to turn our captivity. God, we believe that our captivity is turned. No more bondage. No more sickness. No more disease. No more depression. No more anxiety. No more worry. No more fear. Turn it around, God. Turn it around. Put a smile on our heart that it will show on our face. God, we thank you for knowing it won't always be like this. And you will perfect those things concerning us. Because sooner or later, it's going to work in our favor. Because we believe you are turning it around for me. If you believe that, put your hands together. And give God a hand me. Thanks for joining. We are so honored to have you worship with us today. We hope and pray that you have been encouraged and inspired. If you like to sow a financial seed, we have provided four ways for you to conveniently give. Join us here every Sunday at 9 a.m. And in the words of Bishop McGee, don't worry about anything, but trust God for everything. See you next time.